Roxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is December the 2nd. It is Thursday and uh, the week is volatile. Stocks are bouncing up and down and mostly down. So let's see if we can uh, make some head or tails of, uh, of, of what's going on out there. So uh, unlike uh, what I usually do, I haven't prepared a uh, presentation to share with you, but I do want to sort of uh, give you a little bit of news and um, Let's just kind of recap and see what's actually going on here uh, over the past couple of days. And then, of course, what uh, the future holds. So um, news headlines today, early this morning, Dow futures swing lower and losses for stocks set to deepen as investors grapple with Omicron and interest rate uncertainty. So, of course, now this article that I'm reading from was at 8.25 this morning, Eastern time, so 8.25 a.m., and uh, an hour later, the uh, Dow finished up significantly higher. In fact, uh, let's take a quick peek and see uh, where we are at right now in terms of the Dow. So let me just go to um, Yahoo Finance for a second. And uh, let's see where we, are, where we are at and what's going on. So this is the um, Yahoo Finance screen right now. This is live. I just refreshed it. So um, the S&P 500 is up almost 1%. The Dow is up more than 1%. NASDAQ is up a bit. Crude is down 1%. Gold is down 1%. Remember the uh, good old days when gold used to be uh, viewed as a store of value, kind of like Bitcoin, which is down 2.5%. Uh, how things change, right? So uh, anyway, let's get back to the news here. So uh, what's going on? U.S. stock futures saw losses pick up on Thursday. Okay, in what has become an increasingly volatile volatile market, resulting in uncertainty over the spread of coronavirus and an uncertain path for monetary policy in the U.S. economy, I am less concerned about the coronavirus, believe it or not, than what I am about the uncertain path for monetary policy and the U.S. economy. Uh, it seems to me almost as if the uh, current administration is on a self-destruction course. Um, and uh, there's still three more years left of this particular administration. So uh, who knows the damage that they can inflict, right? Anyway, fortunately, uh, there are some checks and balances. So hopefully they kick in and we'll see what happens along the way. What is happening? In an incredibly volatile session on Wednesday, the Dow Jones Industrial Index ended 1.3% or 460 points lower. I'm just gonna use the Dow as a benchmark. Obviously, everything was lower. In fact, um, many people um, who uh, communicate with me on a regular basis said, uh, hey, Mr. Roxy, there goes your energy stocks. Actually, the opposite is true. I'd say, Mr. Roxy, there goes all your stocks. So uh, back to one Maserati, two Maserati, three Maseratis, and so on. Market sentiment continues to deteriorate following an ugly slide on Thursday. Wednesday was uh, precipitated by confirmation of the first US Omicron variant case, which sent the S&P 500 below its 50-day moving average for the first time since October 13. It seems that investors' main concern remains the uncertainty. I go with that as opposed to a particular one thing, right? Uh, investors' main concern remains the uncertainty surrounding the Omicron coronavirus variant. I don't think so and the implications, any new restrictions, I think so, might have on the global economy. So what I'm doing there is I'm differentiating for you between the threat of the Omicron virus, which is virtually zero, and the implications of potential new restrictions, which is virtually for sure, right? So uh, effectively, I'm, I'm uh, focusing on the damage that the politicians and the ruling class can do as opposed to the threat of uh, the Omicron virus, which the South Africans who discovered it said is pretty much a non-event. Um, but let's go with the, uh, the panic instead, because that's what fuels the media. It's, um, it's also, it also came as Fed Chair Jerome Powell for the second day brought up the prospect of a quicker taper, which in turn sets the stage for more and faster interest rate hikes. I'll go with that one for sure. What happens is the administration or otherwise the deep state as a general rule, uh, put one puppet in place to, uh, to say a certain thing. And then that person puppets whatever the current narrative is. And um, effectively the very next day, the next state puppet 
steps up and uh, tells you what the new narrative is in this particular instance. Uh, the Fed basically talking about prospects of a quicker taper. Doesn't concern me too much. Uh, faster interest rate hikes also don't really concern me too much, but um, you know, it's media fueled stuff. It's not about COVID, it's about the Fed and what they plan to do. So this guy basically is saying what I just said a minute ago. It's not about COVID, it's about the Fed and what they plan to do. So he's, uh, this is Michael Kramer, the chief executive of Mott Capital Management. So Michael is basically saying it's not about COVID, it's about the Fed. Well, I'm saying it's not about COVID. It's about the restrictions that, it got, that the government can impose upon us. And in addition now, add to that the Fed. The selling will grow much worse. I don't, I don't think so, right? So I, I have a very large group of people that I speak with on a regular basis. I don't really know anyone that's selling. I know some people who've taken some profit uh, in a variety of different ways with trailing stops and covered calls and things like that. Uh, but selling, no, I don't think so. If you sell out of your energy stocks, uh, just keep in mind that you'll see when the 13 Fs are filed at the end of the next quarter, that uh, institutional investors like BlackRock and Vanguard, Vanguard have increased their position. So uh, don't, don't buy too much into this panic selling. This will become about how much pain the Fed can endure, said Michael Kramer, chief executive of Mont Capital. Okay, so Michael says it's not about COVID, it's about the Fed. And the other dude, uh, Charma Lambos Pizuris, who's the head of research at JFD Group, I don't know who that is. Uh, he's basically saying the concern is about the coronavirus and the, the impact of new restrictions, right? What's clear is that the once tranquil markets are now increasingly volatile. Well, if you're an energy investor that hasn't been tranquil at all, we've been dealing with volatility for uh, about 18 months, uh, although uh, over the last year or so, it's been super bullish after the original uh, fears of COVID-19 started subsiding in uh, later 2020. Four Fed officials are due to speak on Thursday. Now that's a concern, man. These are some of the puppets who uh, get put into place to uh, keep the narrative going, whatever that might be. Just as the latest jobless claims report gets released, the OPEC Plus group will also be debating production uh, policy in response to the virus. No, 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 those are two separate sentences. OPEC Plus will be debating production policy, period, in response to the virus. Just a sidebar, it's an extra issue. Then we have another thing. Congressional leaders reached agreement on Thursday on a stopgap spending bill to keep the federal government running through mid-February. Hey, if the government closed, most of us wouldn't even notice. Though a temporary shutdown was still possible with some Senate Republicans holding out over the Biden administration's COVID-19 vaccine mandates for some workers. Well, I was just dismissed in a court. So um, let's take a look here at, uh, at some energy-related news very briefly, and then I'm going to wrap it up. So OPEC agrees to roll over the existing policy and lift output by 400,000 barrels per day in January. So here's the media part, right? Demand concerns were already on the rise, mm. only if the media says so. And the last thing crude oil bulls were expecting to hear was another rollover of the current policy of the OPEC plus group, plus group. a rollover of the current policy. They told us a few months ago that they were going to um, produce an extra 400,000 barrels. Yet contrary to some expectations for only a moderate hike or no hike at all in January, that's exactly what happened. So OPEC plus will be adding more oil to the global supply and thus completely removing the threat of supply shortages at a time when demand is expected to fall. Well, you may be right, you may be wrong. Time will tell, we'll see what happens, right? Um, at the time of writing, this was this morning at 9.47 a.m. It is now just after 10. Uh, WTI was trading at 64.78 a barrel and, crude, and uh, Brent crude was at 68.14 a barrel. Uh, 60 bucks ain't, uh, ain't bad, especially given the fact that the first two months of the uh, third quarter have been phenomenally good. How good? This good, Mr. Oxy. Occidental just announced a cash tender offer any and all of certain of the senior notes for up to $2 billion aggregate purchase price. This was today at uh, 8 a.m. If you uh, follow Oxy, you might've seen that they, uh, they just filed a new 8K. Um, these securities, by the way, range from uh, senior notes that are 2.9% uh, senior notes due in 2024 to uh, senior notes that are due in 2045. 4.65%. Uh, 
This type of a notice, Occidental announces a cash tender offer for all and any of certain notes up to a $2 billion aggregate purchase price. Is not just your standard uh, debt reduction kind of news. This is um, this is indicative of a company that is literally printing money. Uh, so despite all the volatility and all the negative news and the stock prices crashing and crumbling and stuff, you know the energy companies are still printing money. They're even printing money at sixty-four bucks. Because remember, and by the way, it's only sixty-four bucks today. We'll see what happens next week or whatever as this thing uh, fluctuates and bounces up and down. Um, the companies, the energy companies as a general rule are making a lot of money. The third quarter will be good, uh, almost, almost to a degree, regardless of what happens in December. But don't be surprised if we see a December uh, sort of rally, you know, the old uh, proverbial Santa rally towards the end of the year. It could happen, it may not. Um, you know what? Uh, you need to be concerned. You need to manage your money. I, I addressed this in the previous video that I made where I said there are many things that you can do. You can hedge. Um, you can reinvest dividends. Make sure that you have some dividend-paying stocks, especially high dividend-paying stocks. You can use covered calls. You can use trailing stops. You can do a whole variety of things in order to, uh, to protect your assets. And uh, in the previous video, I closed it off with rule number one and rule number two. So I'm just going to do it again in case you didn't watch that video. Rule number one is don't lose money. Rule number two is don't forget. Rule number one. On that note, guys, this is Mr. Roxy signing off, saying thanks for watching. Uh, see you soon.